Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Mullins and the title of my paper is The Lost Arcs, Liberating Character Arcs from Campbell's Monomyth. And in it, I argue that the widespread influence of Campbell's Monomyth continues to limit our understanding of basic narrative concepts, in particular, the concept of character arcs. But let me start with another type of arc. In the film Raiders of the Lost Ark, does Indiana Jones have a character arc? Now, as we all know, advocates of the hero's journey would argue emphatically, yes, he does. In, in the world of Campbell's monomyth, all heroes change. The, the language of the hero's journey is absolutely brimming with the potential for psychological and emotional transformation. Atonement with the father, the ultimate boon, uh, the master of two worlds, freedom to live. And when it comes to Hollywood heroes, you know, Indiana Jones is one of the most iconic. He must go through a hero's journey, right? He must have an arc. So what is it? Is it his fear of snakes? It seems a bit trivial given the gravity of Indy's quest. And besides, it's not like he learns to love them. What about his questionable relationship to his ex-lover, Marion, which she herself describes as wrong because she was a child? But Indy dismisses it and he refuses to reflect on his actions, so, you know, no arc there. And I have to say, with Phoebe Waller-Bridge working on Indiana Jones 5, I really hope she digs into that sordid bit of backstory. What about Indy's attitude to superstition, which seems to shift during the climax when he looks away from the frightening power of the arc, but this is hardly a transformative road to Damascus moment for Indy, just as it's hardly the sort of master of two worlds or freedom to live moment that's demanded by the hero's journey. No, Indiana Jones doesn't survive his adventures because he emotionally transforms. He wins because he stays the same resourceful, wisecracking hero that he's always been. His virtues are staying cool and not getting emotional. Certainly not emotional in the sense required by the hero's journey, which is ironic given he was created by George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, two directors who more than any helped define Hollywood's version of the monomyth. So much for its universality. But maybe this is not just a problem with the hero's journey, but also a problem with how we think about the concept of character arcs. For example, when describing a character arc, is it always about an emotional transformation? If so, how do we discuss characters who do not emotionally transform? How do we ex examine their emotional world and the stories they inhabit? If they don't have a character arc, who the hell are they? Well, what I would argue is that the two are related to issues. The hero's journey not only flattens the differences between cultures and their storytelling traditions, it has also contributed to the flattening of concepts within Western storytelling itself. In particular, the concept of a character arc, which I contend is one of the most important, yet most misunderstood concepts in a writer's toolkit. The basis of my case is that beyond its mythic language and 17 stages and three acts, the hero's journey is just a character arc. It's literally in the name of the thing, hero's journey, character arc. But despite its claims of universality, it's a very particular type of character arc. It's about a change character with an optimistic arc. The story works out well for the hero because they were able to emotionally transform themselves at just the right moment. It's a, it's a tale of emotional growth, which naturally enough is an idea that fits well with the concept of an arc because both imply progression, like a physical arc that bends through space, a narrative arc implies a character or a story that shifts through time through the time of the story. So given the influence of the hero's journey, I think it's no surprise that character arcs have all but become synonymous with describing a sense of emotional change. But I would argue that this is an unnecessarily narrow understanding of what an, a character arc can describe because it automatically excludes characters like Indy who don't emotionally change. And a great many stories within Western storytelling, including many classic and extremely commercial Hollywood examples, feature protagonists who don't emotionally transform. So Alien, Jaws, Aaron Brockovich, Die Hard, um, 12 Angry Men, Badlands, um, more recently Promising Young Woman, The Father, The Killing of Two Lovers, the, and countless more. These are important stories and the characters in them are worthy of examination. but 
We don't have to create a new narrative concept to study them just because they resist a traditional hero's transformation. We can still use good old character arcs. The approach I argue for in my paper and in my book Beyond the Hero's Journey is in part drawn from a career working in TV writers rooms where character arcs play a central role in developing screen stories and where writers are more often than not dealing with characters who, like Indiana Jones, stubbornly resist emotional change. They do this season after season after season. Yes, as TV writers around the world will be able to attest, a character who doesn't change can have an arc. It's just not a hero's journey style arc. My approach is called arc analysis and involves breaking character arcs into two parts, character and arc. Firstly, using a very common writing technique, a character is defined as the relationship between their internal and external worlds. So the character's internal world includes their hopes and dreams and beliefs and fears and ambitions, etc. All the intangible things that make up their inner world. The character's external world includes all the physical and tangible parts of their world, their, their family, their friends, their colleagues, their career, their neighborhood, where they live, uh, you know, its cultural and physical environment. Secondly, the arc of the character is the interaction between their internal and external worlds over the course of the story. And it's this interaction that creates the character's arc. This, this arc can be represented visually to great effect in order to reveal the unique shape of a character arc and, and see how it shapes the story as well. For example, in A Hero's Journey, the character experiences a series of external changes which force them to make a series of internal choices, some of which are very unusual for the character, indicating that they're undergoing an emotional change. As a result of this emotional change, the story resolves in an optimistic way. The story is about a change character with an optimistic arc when it comes to a hero's journey. But of course the character could also have made a series of fairly typical choices that did not require emotional change. In this situation, if they did this through the whole story, they would be a constant character. And depending on the story, they could have an optimistic, a pessimistic, or even an ambivalent arc. In this way, an examination of the character's arc helps reveal the unique emotional shape of the story by showing how the inner emotional world of the protagonist interacts with the external events of the plot to create the narrative. As a result, this approach dramatically widens the range of stories that can be analysed for their unique character arcs. You know, it can easily take in everything from inspiring tales of transformation and triumph, uh, like the hero's journey, to tragedies of powerlessness and despair and everything in between. In fact, it's somewhat ironic that the hero's journey, for all its talk of traveling to special worlds, seems stuck in a fairly pedestrian corner of the storytelling landscape. It, it's like the hero's journey needs to go on a hero's journey of its own. One of the most interesting outcomes of this approach is the potential to identify a range of tonal qualities associated with the unique character arc of the story, which in turn can hint at the broad cultural and creative worldview of the storytellers. For example, a strict hero's journey invariably presents a change character with an optimistic arc. In other words, the key problem to overcome in a hero's journey is the hero's internal flaw that must be recognized and corrected before the story's conflict can be resolved. So the real problem is inside the hero themselves it's not the world around them. Now this might sound fine if the hero is a white Western male who has been raised in a culture that consciously and unconsciously privileges white male perspectives above all else. But if the hero of the story is a woman or black or brown or Asian or part of the LGBTQIA plus community or disabled, then the idea that the central problem is somehow the internal world of the protagonist and not the prejudices of the external world around them, it might start to feel a bit inauthentic, uh, especially to the audiences from those backgrounds. These are the sorts of arcs that get lost in discussions about story that continue to be dominated by the hero's journey. These stories are out there, but many of the narrative tools we've been using fail to adequately describe them. To close, I'll give you a very quick example of what I mean. In the critically and commercially successful film Promising Young Woman by Admiral Fennell, 
The protagonist, Cassie, likes to expose the predatory behaviour of the men she picks up in bars. And she does this in order to grieve the rape and death by suicide of her best friend. Now, everyone in the story urges her to leave this painful past behind and move on with her life. And for a short time, Cassie is tempted to do exactly that until she's brutally reminded of the pervasiveness of male complicity in her friend's death. Instead of looking inward, like a hero's journey would require, Cassie looks outward and sees a corrupt world in desperate need of redress, something she's believed from the very beginning of the story. And without spoiling the ending completely, Cassie does get sweet revenge, but she pays a heavy price, making her a constant character with an ambivalent arc. She's a hero, all right, just not the sort of hero the monomyth would recognize. With more research and interrogation, my hope is that arc analysis has the potential to dramatically widen the storytelling landscape available for researchers, writers, and lovers of story alike. Thanks for listening, everyone.